everyone, my name's Johan. I'm a co-founder of a company called Lantern, and we specialize in real-time and predictive analytics around foot traffic and crowd density. Hi, my name is Tara. I am the co-founder of Here We Flow, and we, our mission is healthier, eco-friendlier, adorabler personal care that gives back. Um, so we make organic cotton tampons, organic bamboo, sanitary towels for menstrual use and for bladder use. And we now also make regenerative rubber vegan condoms. Prior to the pandemic, I would say about 95% of our sales were retail. So you could walk into a Boots and find Flow around March, just launched with Monopri in France, which is a retailer very similar to Marks and Spencer, and Jumbo in the Netherlands. And Jumbo is very similar to Tesco. So we had an EU presence, but we were primarily a UK business and primarily bricks and mortar. We had our own website and we had a presence on Amazon, but very tiny amount of our sales were going through those channels. The time has now come for us all to do more. From this evening, I must give the British people a very simple instruction. You must stay at home. After the pandemic um, hit in March, for a, a good couple of months, I would say two to three months, there was um, a lot of turmoil in the retail market, especially for smaller brands. And as part of that, a lot of retailers actually paused non-category A goods, which includes um, products like, you know, um, organic cotton tampons like us, but they would have the mainstream corporate brand. The last year has had a huge impact on how we, and I suppose most businesses have had to run themselves. Initially, we were actually focused on a completely different problem. And that problem was trying to help humanitarian workers in conflict zones to navigate safely. And we were about to roll out a prototype of our product in Colombia when COVID-19 happened and the whole country just went into lockdown. So we were faced with this dilemma of, do we just wait for the current pandemic to end or do we try and focus our attention and our skill set onto the current pandemic? And we chose the latter. And our CTO, Sebastian, actually suggested coming up with this idea of modeling foot traffic and crowd density. And as a result of that, we launched a free app called Crowdless in April 2020. And that was all about showing people real-time information on how crowded supermarkets were, so people could choose to visit at a less busy time or a less busy alternative supermarket. And we launched this right at the time when the first lockdown was happening and pretty much the only place that people could go to were supermarkets. So it was the right time, a right place for us. And as a result of that, the app ended up going viral and we ended up getting quite a lot of media coverage around Europe, which then led to companies approaching us, asking for our data set on crab density and foot traffic. On the sales side in the UK, a huge amount of our UK retail sales just disappeared for the first six months of the pandemic. But what we've discovered this year is that when our kinds of products are purchased online, they're really purchased in a basket. Our own website sales have definitely gone up over the past year, but not the way you might imagine. Instead, our Amazon sales went from literally zero or like 200 pounds every month or something to like so much more. I can't even tell you, but like so much more. So suddenly Amazon for us took over what we were making before in the UK brick and mortar retail channel. We redid our website, we started digital marketing, which we hadn't really done before, and just took the whole e-commerce space a lot more seriously and got some really interesting learnings from that, as well as more sales. The other thing that happened was that anything related to a supply chain became a lot harder. It used to be like five days maximum to deliver from the UK to the Netherlands or France. All of a sudden during COVID, we were seeing deliveries to the EU take three weeks. Consumer products, good cash cycle is already pretty difficult. Anyone who's familiar will tell you, you're always fighting this battle between paying for your goods, paying the factory to make your goods, and then getting the retailer to pay you. What we actually had to do way before we thought we would was hire an extra part-time um, supply chain manager. So we got some help there and they've been with us since August, made a big difference. 
Um, we started using invoice financing um, to make sure that our cash cycles were optimized. And also it just made us prioritize channels where we had the highest margins and the fastest repayments. Also what happened this year is we launched in America, which has ended up really helping us. So that is one thing that we've done over the past four months is, you know, we've set up a warehouse in Portland, Oregon. Um, we've delivered to hundreds of stores on the West Coast in America and also um, set up launches with big online retailers, including Amazon, but also RiteAid.com will be happening in a few months. Costco.com will be happening soon. Really, COVID has forced many companies to just remain agile and flexible and continually think outside the box. And that's really the characteristics of being in this game of running your own business and starting up a business during a global pandemic. But that said, there are a lot of negatives, but we've, we've also seen quite a lot of positives around this environment as well. And I'll just give you one example of that, which is uh, previously before the pandemic, we were spending a lot of time getting on the tube, going from place to place in London, meeting with potential customers or potential investors. As the world has moved online, uh, we haven't had to spend any time at all commuting for obvious reasons, but that just means that we're so much more efficient during our day and we're able to have conversations with potential customers in Germany or in Hungary and also speak with potential investors on the other side of the world. So that's been fantastic for us. The other thing is the funding environment is incredibly challenging uh, at the moment uh, and that's because it's not just a health pandemic, it's an economic crisis as well. But that said, there are some positives to emerge out of this. The UK government and a lot of EU institutions are releasing more and more grants, so equity-free funding for businesses to come up with novel ideas and to create employment opportunities. So we've been really fortunate to have benefited from a couple of grants during this period and I encourage all uh, entrepreneurs out there who are thinking about uh, going through the VC investor route to firstly investigate whether there are any grants available for you because it might just be free cash that you're eligible for. Working with a team during COVID has been uh, full of challenges but also benefits as well. The main challenge really is the fact that we're just unable to interact on a person-to-person, -person, face to face basis with people. But that said, we're trying our best to come up with uh, virtual socials every two weeks on a Friday. We play online games and that's a really good way of keeping up the, the team spirit and team bonding. Given that everything has gone remote, we're able to hire really talented people in all corners of the world. So we've just um, uh, brought on board a very talented software engineer from Romania, and we've also brought on board a really talented data scientist based in Ireland. Making sure that we focused on the social aspect of team when we couldn't see each other, because we've only seen each other once since March in person, all as a team. So things like playing games um, on Fridays, we will have like the Zoom social, but not from like six to eight. Our Zoom social will be from five to six so that people don't feel that it's cutting into their free time. You should have a support system. Maybe that's your co-founder. Maybe it's some investors that you are close with. I definitely have learned from this experience to like, that it's very important to have one day where I don't do anything but like read and go on walks and eat and just chill out. And then maybe the next day try and do that as, as much as I can. I, I do a bit of work on Sundays. And then the other thing would be self care, making sure you do get sleep, you're eating regular meals um, and you're taking off a day on the weekends at least to just fully unplugged, don't look at the work email, don't touch anything. It's an incredibly challenging time, both on a personal level and on a business level. So take care of, your, care of yourself, take care of your mental health. Uh, it's so important uh, during these, these current times and really try and find virtual online communities of other uh, entrepreneurs uh, and people involved in startups so that you can share your journey, at least remotely and virtually, because the uh, in-person networking events are obviously not taking place at the moment. And it's really important to be able to have an outlet to share the ups and downs of the entrepreneurial journey with other like-minded people. Don't be afraid to pivot. Don't be afraid to look, you know, just because you started, you launched in a territory um, 
or you launch in a certain channel, don't be afraid to look at the numbers and say, okay, this doesn't make sense. But on the other hand, you know, every, every new channel deserves, often deserves six months. So yeah, when you're going through turbulent times, don't be afraid to take a critical eye. Don't be afraid to stick it out if the numbers are telling you that things could improve and will improve.